Today, Apple released watchOS 26.2 to the public. So let's talk about everything new. First off, let's go into the settings app, go down to general about the build number on this one is 23S303. And so far I've ran a few of the betas. Everything's been holding up really well and there are a few new things in this build. So first off, for the first thing we're gonna talk about, we actually need to move the watch aside and take a look at the iPhone. So the first thing is the enhanced safety alert. So it's on the iPhone, but of course, Anything with notification and alerts also includes the watch, but what you can do is you go into the settings app. Once you're in here, you actually scroll down to notifications and then basically scroll all the way down to the end and you'll see this enhanced safety alerts section now. So in here, you can actually get notifications on earthquake alerts, and imminent threat alerts. And in emergency situations, your iPhone and of course the Apple Watch can receive safety alerts and broadcast them anonymously to nearby Apple devices, which would include your watch. So it's really cool to see that Apple has added this. From what I'm hearing, the alerts can actually show rich information, including maps and affected areas. Also, they can link you to guidance on what you may need to do in one of these emergency situations. Now back on the watch, the first feature we're gonna talk about is the sleep score. So Apple has actually enhanced the sleep score on the Apple Watch because people were seeing some of the scores and they weren't really fully agreeing with what they saw. But all you have to do to see your sleep score is actually sleep with the Apple Watch. But then once you have and you wake up in the morning, you will get a sleep score every day. So last night I had a 91, which is pretty high, not my highest. I've actually had a 100 before, but that was before the update. The highest I've had since the update is 97, I believe, but most of the time my sleep score is pretty low. So the way the sleep score works is if we go into the little eye right here, you can see I had high, I slept from 10.15 to 5.01. My duration was six hours and 40 minutes. So I scored a 42 out of 50. Bedtime, I went an hour and 10 minutes earlier than average. So 29 out of 30 there. And I only had two wake ups and they only totaled six minutes. So 20 out of 20 there. So it also tells you a little bit of detail. So it says a high sleep score means you might not have slept perfectly, but you got the sleep you need. Your sleep was likely to be restorative and may also support your long-term health. And then it tells you how the sleep score is calculated. So they basically have made some tweaks here and there just to make sure that the sleep score is as accurate as possible. But some people just really weren't liking the results they were getting based on how Apple was calculating things. So they tweaked it a little bit and maybe you'll see some improvements with how your sleep score is going. But every time I think about my sleep score, I also think about the Vitals app. So I can come in here, go into the Vitals app. Sadly, if you live in the US, you still don't have the blood oxygen readings in here and there's no real update to that, but I did wanna inform you there is an app that will get you your blood oxygen readings back on your watch. If you have a newer watch and you live in the US that is affected by that ban, this app called O2 Buddy actually gets you access to your O2 readings back on your watch. And I'll actually demonstrate it real quick for you. So basically if I put this on my wrist. So the way the app actually works is you still need the blood oxygen app from Apple. So you come in here, you can take a new reading. It does take 15 seconds to take a reading. You gotta hold your wrist as still as possible. But once it does complete, now, if you have a new watch, it will not tell you the reading on the app. If you have an old watch, it will, or if of course you're outside the US, you'll get that as well. But all you have to do now is come in here, tap on the notification, and you can see my reading is horrible, but it is already there. How this works is through the app on the iPhone. There is an app called O2Buddy on the iPhone as well. 
And as soon as a reading comes in, it works in the background. It does have to be launched in the background. So you may have to open it every so often back again, just so it can have priority. But it grabs that reading and then it sends it to the watch. So you can have all those readings on your watch and on your watch face through a complication. So if you're interested in the app at all, click the link in the description and I have a full video on the app as well that you can watch that I will link at the end of this video. Now, sadly, watchOS 26.2 isn't all good news, especially if you're in the EU. There's been some changes to the Wi-Fi sharing between the watch and the phone. And what happens basically if you've connected to a new Wi-Fi with your phone when your watch was away, the watch will not get that new network. So it's a little weird. It does feel like it would be a bug, but it's not a bug. It's some kind of changes that the EU has made. But basically this is some EU rule that, <laughs> that doesn't want devices sharing Wi-Fi information. So Apple can only do it if they are together. So if you're somebody that doesn't wear your watch all the time and you connect to a network just with your phone and then you go there with just your watch, you're not gonna automatically connect and it's gonna be a pain in the butt to try to get this connected to that network, especially if there's a password involved and stuff like that. So just be mindful if you do see this change, it's not a bug, it's just something that the EU is forcing on not just Apple, I'm sure other manufacturers are gonna have some weird issues with this new rule as well. Now, Apple did also specifically call out a fix that they implemented in watchOS 26.2, and that is with the music app. Basically, if you're in here, you're listening to music and you hit the next track, in the previous versions of watchOS 26, sometimes nothing would happen. So Apple has figured out what that was causing that issue and actually has it fixed now. So every time you tap that next track, it's going to automatically go to that next track as it should. But this was the only bug that Apple officially and like mentioned in this build. I'm sure there are many, many more, but they must not be something as large as this one. I'm guessing a lot of people experience this one and they just want to let everybody know that this has now been fixed. As always, there's probably numerous security features and fixes in this build as well. Apple always releases that a little after the release, so we'll have to wait a little bit later today before we actually get access to that full list. Usually there's anywhere between like 15 to 40 different security fixes. That list will be posted down below as soon as Apple posts it, just so you know. And as far as performance and everything, everything seems to be flowing really well in 26.2. Like I've not had really any issues launching apps, going through stuff, getting in to different areas. Everything seems to be working really well. Even on apps, like I never even actually use the weather app. I always just use Carrot Weather. But everything seems to be working really well. Battery life has also been pretty good on this build. I gotta say, I've not been super impressed with the battery life on the Ultra 3. I don't, I don't really notice a big difference from the Ultra 1. I'm sure a lot of you out there probably do, but I'm just not seeing it. But I can go into the settings, go to battery. And we'll go ahead and take a look. I'm at 83% right now. And I did charge it last night to 100 at 9 o'clock last night. So, But now I did not have my phone that was paired turned on. So it probably dropped a little bit more than normal. I can go into the battery health. Still at 100% there. No issues on that. Optimized charging limit is on. But overall, battery has been about the same. Maybe a little better but I've not noticed anything. But if you are seeing bad battery life, I always recommend getting that update because usually there's something internal that just did not go right with the last install and it will fix that when you get that update. Now, as far as this watch band goes, if you're interested in this watch band at all, this is the new Stratus band from a company called Nomad. And it is amazing. It's titanium with like a rubber inner area. So it's incredibly comfortable to wear. It stretches like you have some stretch. Like I've worn this 
every day since I got it over a month ago. I've never worn a band this long at a time, but this is like the one band and you're done. Like it looks amazing on the watch. If you don't like the orange, it does come in two other colors. You can just get black that will blend in perfectly and look great. They also have a black titanium version of it if you have that black titanium Apple watch. And I think they also have like a greenish neon color as well if you don't like the orange or the black. So great band, it is expensive. It's I think $170, $180, somewhere in that price range. But it does have that nice magnetic clasp that is super strong. I've had Nomad bands for years and really do love them. So if you're in the market for a new band for your Ultra, I highly recommend this band. And if you wanna see more on this band, you can click right here to watch that right now. Or if you wanna see the video on the O2 Buddy app, click right here. Hope you have a great one. I'll see you in the next one. God bless.